Hello and welcome to ILTV's Elections Arena. I'm Aaron Porras and today in the ring, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu rescinds his request for Knesset immunity and gets indicted. Meanwhile, the United States is finally unveiling its long-awaited Middle East peace plan. Joining us to discuss is columnist for Newsweek and editor of HistoryCentral.com, Mark Shulman. And on the other side, Ziv Ma'o, chairman of Israel Media Watch. Thank you both so much for being with us today. Thank you for having us. Let's move on to our first topic. So, now while Prime Minister Netanyahu has been in Washington, D.C., discussing the United States peace deal with President Trump, a Knesset committee has been preparing to decide on Netanyahu's request for diplomatic immunity. But that won't be necessary any longer, as Netanyahu has officially withdrawn his immunity request. And not soon after, Attorney General Mandelblit issued formal indictments on charges of fraud, bribery, and breach of trust. So, Zeev, I want to start with you. Yeah. That did not take long. What, yeah, why, well, I think that the one word that could describe the behavior of the, of the general attorney is hastiness in this context. What Netanyahu hoped, I guess, to achieve is avoiding the uh, deliberations in the Knesset well, about the immunity. He, it, it sounds he knew that he wasn't going to get The question anyway. is whether or not the left is going to have a picture of Netanyahu sitting in court before the elections or not. This is the question at hand whether we're going to have this photo up or not. This is something that they believe. Do you think that that's the idea behind issuing indictment, uh, indictments uh, uh, at this Several time? hours. Well, uh, as, as we just discussed, well, the fact is that uh, the, the building of the uh, uh, regional court in Jerusalem, where uh, the trial will take place, and of the general attorney, just one street behind another, and the documents were already prepared because they were delivered the, three months ago to the chairman of the Knesset. So on one hand, well, it doesn't need anything then to, to push a button on the printer and to get it out to the other hand, to, to the other side but on the other hand doing such a thing in a manner of hours is not typical behavior of the legal uh, establishment of, uh, in Israel. Well, so, so Mark, what, what is typical behavior in this situation? There is because no typical behavior, let's be honest. The, since, since Mandelblit and the whole legal establishment has been attacked time and time and time again by Netanyahu and his minions, it would be really reasonable to expect them to move a little bit more quickly. I mean, you can't keep on doing this and not expecting any sort of, I won't call it retaliation, but any well, pushback. What about due process in a There is due trial. process. I know that this yeah, is so an American is, concept. Right, so there is due process. See, there's, no, there's no lack of due process. See, no, I mean, I'm, saying, I'm, I'm saying, could that not have been the idea? No, the idea, the, 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 no, the idea was trial? that no, the idea was they were waiting. They got the okay, and they ran and did it right away before something else could happen. We're in a world where things are happening so quickly that the moment he, the moment it's given in to the court, there's no more immunity. That was it. Now it's closed the door until the, yeah. until the court actually receives it. Who knows what could theoretically happen? But the moment those papers hit the court, that's the end of the whole question of immunity. It will not come up again. He will stand trial. What will happen afterwards, who knows? But the fact of the matter is he will stand trial. There's nothing that could stop that. There's no act of Knesset. I mean, I guess the Knesset could vote, I don't know, to, uh, to upend all the laws what? retroactively. But there's nothing that really can be done at this you point. To stop. But, uh, well, uh, let's put that aside. I mean, the Knesset does have the possibility to redefine the, SM of, uh, the essence of bribery I, but to kick a, out, just a second, to kick, to kick out the, the biggest element of this indictment, which is a complete uh, lucrative. Would that be an ex pax, ex pax facto law? No, it wouldn't be. Yes, no, it according wouldn't. to the Israeli law, once a criminal uh, code is being amended uh, uh, to make it easy on a defendant, then it, uh, it it applies for suspending, not yeah. retroactively, yeah. but he was not convicted yet. So now, by the way, a, even when someone is then. convicted, if, for instance, we have a crime that carries five years penalty and someone sits in jail for uh, four years and then the Knesset decides to amend it so that it will be three years, this guy will go out immediately, even though he was indicted in a five-year crime. So if the Knesset decides to amend what I believe it, she should be, the Knesset, uh, uh, to amend the definition of bribery, to kick out this lucrative of, of, of Netanyahu accepting bribery in the, in the form of, uh, of positive coverage, if this happens, then this means that the indictment will fall right at hand. But this is a question for the different Knesset. The, the, the question right now is whether or not there is going to be a photo of Netanyahu in court before the elections. And I do believe that what uh, Mandelbit tried today is quite visible and transparent, that he's trying to achieve that because he's taking part in this election and trying to get the, the Israeli public to vote this way rather than the other. Okay, right. this is, again, one of these absurd things of talking about Mendelblit who was a close confidant of Netanyahu, was appointed by Netanyahu, as it was the head of the police, as was everybody who's been attacked. Think, things can change. No, but of course they can change. When you're attacked, you change your views. I mean, there was this question always, this, the strategy that Netanyahu and his supporters have had all along, which was to attack whichever group was investigating them at this particular point, to delegitimize them in the public, which is what the goal has been all the way through this investigation, um, had certain advantages. And it's had some polling advantages that a certain percentage of the public says, well, you know, this is just political, it's not real, et cetera, et cetera. But the negative part of it is those people who were attacked 
respond. You know, you don't say, you don't, you don't get attacked. Respond, no, Mark, we're not talking, you're playing quite unfair because this is not the argument. You're, you're portraying a certain argument allegedly made by Netanyahu in, in his minions, as you've just said, and saying this is a ridiculous argument. This is not the argument. The argument is that positive coverage no, in the newspaper I'm not talking, I'm cannot not talk, be I'm, a bribery. I'm, I'm, this I'm is not, the argument. I'm not talking, and just a second. No, I'm not talking about that specifically. I'm talking well, about, well, you're talking no, about a different no, argument no, that was not made by no, anyone. I'm, no, excuse me. I'm talking about the fact that all along, Netanyahu and all the people who support him talk about selective prosecution, not yeah. only on bribery, mm -hmm. on all aspects of it, selective prosecution. Yeah. This was a, some of them say it's a fake trial, it was fake made up, fake evidence, all sorts of different things have been made. Consistently, Netanyahu and his supporters have been attacking the justice system from the police to the attorney general's office yes. to the attorney general, yes. across the board. And now, the reality is most of everybody who they were attacking had been appointed by Netanyahu. And as I understand when Trump attacks the system because he didn't control the system, Netanyahu's been in office for 10 years, more than 10 years. Every, almost everybody who's in any important role, except some of the judges, were appointed by him, either directly or indirectly. To be attacking the system that you created, all of a sudden because you're the person who's being charged or maybe charged, then you can't expect that they, that same system is going to say, oh, we don't care, we'll attack us all you want. I could agree with you on one thing. Netanyahu woke up with those uh, critiques towards the system way, way too late. His supporters, such as myself, have been saying the same thing way before he was even investigated. We have a legal uh, system that is completely out of control, has got no checks and balances whatsoever, and at this moment it is completely focused on replacing the government in Israel in undemocratic way. This is the fact, and this has been the okay, fact that's, way before uh, okay, Netanyahu well, have said it for the okay, first this, time. This is absurd, you know, it's a, it's a ridiculous argument. I agree with you, by the way, about the, the court system. I don't like the court system. Mm -hmm. I think it needs to be changed completely. I can sit here a whole show and say all the things I think are wrong with the Israeli legal system and court system. However, the system is not designed right now to replace the government in undemocratic ways. The, first of all, the government in this country is not a government of one person. We don't elect the prime minister, we elect the party. In two seconds, once, prime once the prime minister no, resigns, we automatically go to elections. This except the before, the, before the election. There was, anyone else could have run right now as head of the could mm -hmm. and probably done as well as Netanyahu, but the decision was made. He has the only person. Even though he's been indicted, he's the only person. The reality is they weren't trying to, not trying to replace this government, they're trying to replace Netanyahu, this they, person, who, they, the who, they believe, who they believe yeah. very strongly has violated the law many, many times. No, I do not and believe the, that they believe and the, so. and the reality is he has, in terms of, he even admits the, whole, the simple no, case, the, case 1000, yeah. is clearly a violation of law. No, I'm sorry, no, it is. No, it is not. Receiving it is gifts is illegal in Israeli law. Okay, uh, unless, unless the friendship was created before oh, come on, the person the took office. Was, this is the law. This is the law. I mean, you can say uh, either he broke the law or he did not broke the law, but we, you look at the law, and the law says that once the, the friendship was created before the person took office, then it is legal to, to receive presents. Now, put aside the faction, the, 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 whether or not it is, it is nice or polite to receive presents in such amount. The question is whether or not he broke the law. If the friendship existed before he took office, the answer is yes, it is legal. It is not illegal. That's the way it is. And the fact that he is being indicted not for bribery and not for, for breaking the, the uh, the present law, which is the law that we're currently uh, uh, discussing, but in the really ridiculous felony of uh, how do you translate the uh, Breach of trust. Breach of trust, trust, which trust. is something that should not exist. Well, it's graft. It's, uh, it's uh, graft. fancier. Yeah, it's and, fancier and, graft, but if indeed he would have broke the, 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 the present law, which we're talking, the, the, the law of presence, the act of, of whether or not a, a politician should be uh, allowed to receive present, then there are specific articles in this act that he would be indicted for. He is not indicted, but just just a breach of trust, which is ridiculous. That's so. Okay. No, no it's just it's, it's just time uh, to move on. I just think it's absurd. Okay. Well, so so not then, this discussion. I'm saying the whole question of, of course of what. Well, so my question then is, what what does this mean for the elections in general? Because nothing can the prime no, minister no, no. run okay, under indictment. Okay. okay, there's two questions here. One we don't have the answer to. When the day comes for for President Rivlin to decide whether he can give Netanyahu the role of forming a government. We have no idea what the legal situation is going to be at that particular moment. We have untested waters. We have no idea. We can speculate, but we really don't know. So that's number one. We do not know whether he'll be allowed to form the government or not at this point as someone who's formally under indictment. Uh, so that's but, question. Very, but he can no, run. Nothing, nothing he can is stopping run. He, he, can, he, can, run. he can run. He can run. And according to the law itself, there is no legal thing to prevent. There is anything legal to prevent Rivlin from 
giving it to him. But you know that there is bad blood between Rivlin and Netanyahu. We know that uh, 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 Rivlin have decided in the recent uh, four or five years to serve as minion of the other side, of the undemocratic side of the justice system and court side, system yeah, in, uh, yeah. of Israel. And he is basically acts as their servant. So it is reasonable okay. to really, accept. Really, 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 he, 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 he gave Netanyahu the, the chance to form a government twice now. Uh, well, uh, he, attack, had, the, he had the, no the, choice. The attacking on Rivlin is well, one of the most, is, is the saddest thing I have to say about everyone on the right wing. If you're not Netanyahu, you're suddenly left, you're, you're a minion of the no, left. No, if you ah, accuse on. your own people in choosing excuse, terrorism, if excuse, you ban a singer from excuse, singing in, 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 the, me, you, in the president's you, mansion because he, he wrote some right-wing song, if you do this stuff, then you're not, all, uh, not on right. It's got nothing to do with Netanyahu. Rivlin proved himself to be in to the be left not, to, in the past to, decade, to be way before he was appointed to become president. Rivlin has proved himself to be the president of all of the country, no, as opposed to part of the country. Yes, he has. No, he's, not. he's a man who comes from a right-wing background, a member of Likud for all his life, proud member of Likud. The fact of the matter is that he broke with the far right part of Likud and he broke with Netanyahu. Suddenly he's a traitor. Everybody who doesn't support Netanyahu becomes a traitor. Everybody who right accuses wing. the entire Jewish people of choosing the way of terrorism, because, uh, uh, the path of terrorism become the, because of the acts of individuals is in the extreme left. Not in the left, in the extreme, extreme left. left. And okay. this is the language then, then, that he chose. I did not write it for him. It okay. has nothing to do with Rivlin Netanyahu whatsoever. Okay, well, when, when you make such st statement, this is what becomes of you. There is okay. no other way to look at it. Okay, fine. He's extreme and, left. And this is not a single occasion. I, if Rivlin is extreme left, I'm, I don't know where on the spectrum I stand, but I mean, Rivlin is, Rivlin believes in, in Eretz Yisrael Shleimah, he believes in all of the land of Israel, that's his view, right. so. All right, well my final comment, because I, I, question, I want to bring things back towards the election itself. Yeah. How, how do you think that this will play out in the polls? Because so far, I mean, Netanyahu's supporters have remained pretty constant. But this is, I mean, this is now a formal indictment. Does that change anything in no, their view? No, the, at least in the, in, in, when it comes to Netanyahu's supporters, for the mainstream of it, then they, there is complete mistrust of the kind that I've just mm. uh, articulated in the system itself. We do not believe in the good faith of the people who wrote this indictment. We believe they do not do it in order to maintain uh, uh, the law and the order. They do it in order to, uh, to, to kick him out of, uh, of office. And once this is the case, the fact that, uh, 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 that he was eventually indicted means nothing. There is a portion of the Israeli right, though, that is leaning towards supporting uh, the Blue-White Party uh, because they do have, they still have faith. They're very similar in, in many of the, in many uh, respects well, in terms of their ideology. No, well, I do not accept equal. that. They do have some right-wing elements, uh, but on the other hand, they're balanced by leftists, such as Ofer Shelach and mm. Eniel German, who have recently uh, uh, just made a statement about uh, re-enacting the disengagement of 2005, which is something that is carved in the, in the Israeli collective memory as a very wrong thing to do. Uh, and when you have such a representative in your party, this basically means that you are in the left. But they do have representatives on the right, and when you're talking about balance, the one balances the other, and it turns out that Blue-White is a party without an ideology whatsoever. The only thing that they all unite about is the need to, uh, uh, to kick out Netanyahu, and this is something that the pe people who've just indicted it are also ideologically identified with. Well, after three years of propaganda, this view, is, he's correct, is accepted by a certain percentage, a high percentage of Netanyahu supporters. They all distrust the whole system completely. The, the propaganda has worked, even though it's baseless, in my opinion. But the reality is this is, an, this is a turnout election. The whole question is, if, if there'll be any changes from the last election, it'll all be a question of turnout. Mm. Will supporters of Netanyahu turn out in greater numbers or in lesser numbers? Are they tired of him and stay home, or are they going to feel they have to come and defend him? Will the supporters of Blue and White and the other parties that are to the left say, finally, we just have to push a little bit harder, push a little bit harder, and we'll get there? Or they say, mm. we've tried twice, we haven't succeeded, then I'm going to take a day in, on the beach or whatever it may be. Well, That's the question we don't have the answer to. What we've just seen in the past few days in, okay, in Washington, we're just coming out of it on one hand, and the indictment on the other hand is going to, uh, to, pu to push for a significant turnout in the right. And the fact that uh, Gantz is caving in and basically accepting the liquid ideology also will mean that the people on the left will have, w w w will, might eventually say, we have no reason to come out. And, and I do believe that the, this week, if the elections would have been taking place tomorrow, then uh, Netanyahu would have won big time. But between now and, 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 and the election itself, we have so much, so much things so, could happen. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, on that note, let's move on to our second topic today. The long wait is finally over, and the United States' Middle East peace plan is being revealed today. But neither side is very happy about it, and as expected, uh, with Israelis saying the plan is void of understanding in the conflict while the PA is rejecting it outright. Still, the plan does include a several-year window within which the Palestinians can come back to the table. The question is, will they? 
So let's start with you, Mark. Will the Palestinians realistically come back to the negotiating okay, table? Okay, come back in the future I don't want to talk about. Now they certainly <laughs> won't. Look, the Palestinians have been the people who've made more mistakes in history than any group, of, any group that I can think of historically. They could have had a state, if they hadn't opposed the mandate in 1920, they could have been partners in the mandate. If they hadn't opposed the Peel Plan in 1936, we would have had a teeny state and they would have had a large state. If they would have accepted the partition plan in 47, we would have had two countries here without a question. If after 67, they would have said, you know what, what we really want, we want peace and we want to have our own state in the West Bank, they would have been in peace in 1967. If they would have accepted uh, Ehud Barak's plan, which was overwhelmingly in their favor, overwhelmingly in their favor, much more so we think than the, than, the, than the Trump plan, then they would have had the state back then. They have repeatedly rejected every single plan. They have believed that they have to have the, you know, the, the perfect is better than the good, so to speak, in their case. And they are wedded to the idea, A, they're wedded to the idea of the return of refugees, which they can't seem to get out of their, their mind, even though we're down to the fifth generation. So that's number one. Number two, they really never accepted us here. In reality, over all these, you know, now two or three generations, they still think we're a foreign entity in the land, and they don't want us here, and they're not willing to accept that. The rest of the Arab world have come to the conclusion that we're here to stay, and that better to work with us than to work against us. But the Palestinians, on the other hand, have not. Now, does that mean they never will? And that's probably the major difference between left and right in this country at the moment. I think people, most people on pretty far to the left will agree with what I just said right now. But the question is, do you leave that door open? Do we hope that at some point they'll be willing to come to the table and accept the fact that this is the situation? Maybe. Look, this is the first is there, I mean, time... Is there anyone in the Palestinian Authority leadership that now is leaning for, that now, way? Now, for certainly not. Now, certainly without a doubt. The question is, look... The one, without knowing all the details of the Trump plan, the one thing we can say is very different about the Trump plan to what's gone on over the last 40 years, which is, well, that's really not true in one sense, but in the sense that if they said no, maybe the plan will get better. So that's not true in the sense that they could have, the Peel plan was better than the partition plan, and the partition plan was better than what they would have gotten in 49, et cetera. But since then, they, you know, the Barack's first plan, the plans afterwards that was agreed to at Taba was a little bit better than the Barack's initial plan, and almost in terms of the Palestinians, and the Almut plan seems to have been also a little bit better than what was yeah, offered in Taba. Yeah, that's the way it is. But so for the so first now it's time, gone the other way for, after a for while. For the first time you see a sort of retreat in terms of what the world is offering the Palestinians. Now, uh, when someone is says that he wants something, and another person says, okay, I will give you that, and he says, no, I'll give you that, I'll says no, and I'll give you that, and he says no, so... Maybe he's lying. Maybe this is not the actual thing that they want. Well, they, they didn't want. get exactly what they wanted. No, as, it's not as, the as case because they did get in 2000 in Camp David exactly what they said they want. 97% control of, the, of, 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 of the, what is called the best bank, West Bank of Judea and Samaria. This is what they wanted. This is what they declared that they want. But they didn't, get, they, they, said, they, they didn't get what they wanted all along, which is the return of refugees. Which, now, no, which is never going to happen. No, that's the that's point. One thing that they, that's the point. So they say return of refugees. They say Jerusalem is the capital. And they say... They so that percentage of control over the West Bank and Gaza. This is what they basically always say. And when, when they were given a chance to have a government of their own, to be able to negotiate and acknowledge, being acknowledged as a state, they always said no, which basically means this is not what they want. At the end of the day, the Palestinian project, the Palestinian National Lotion, is a proxy of what was the Arab world, a, me a measure of trying to eliminate the existence of the Jewish state. Ahmed Choukeri, which, which is one of the founders of the PLO, said in 1964, three years before the Six Days War, said that uh, when you look at the Western morality and at the comparison between David and Goliath, then the Arabs are the Goliath and the Jews are the David. We must have a David so to, to absorb the positive feelings of the Western morality in order to, uh, to, to kick out the Zionists. And once, said Ahmed Shukari, once uh, this issue is resolved, once there is no longer a Zionist project and there is no longer a Jewish state, then we should not haste a single second the reuni reunification of the Palestinian group with the greater Arab nation. This is what said the founder of the PLO, and I suggest we listen to them. They do not want a Palestinian state. This is not what they want. They want the alienation of the Jewish state. This is what they've always stood up but, for, and this is why their behavior stated. Spe speaking of the, about the Palestinians on the ground, though, not in the government, yeah. is there, I mean, after 50, 60 years of, of living this way, don't they want change? Of course they want change. Look, one of the greatest <laughs> mistakes we made, frankly, was we didn't turn their life into paradise, quite honestly, in a certain way. We should have that was a mistake on Israel's on part? On Israel's part, yes, it was Israel's part. We should, have dis we should have come in and dismantled the refugee camps and built them nice housing. We should have made sure that everyone was employed 
and doing very well. A lot of things we could have done, but we didn't because we never decided. We, we never could decide what, we, what was going to be the history. Do, is that really Israel's response? I mean, I'm asking. I, 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 that was was it was, it was in our interest. It, it was in our interest. It was our mistake. It was in our interest to do that. We let them stay in refugee camps. Why? Why did we let that happen? We could have bought. We could have built houses. Israel for them. could we, benefit hugely from having them all as citizens, as participants, democrat, participants democratically in this state. There is no doubt about that. There should be a one state between Jordan and, and, and the sea, and all of who resigns and right now should gain a full citizenship. This is my opinion, anyway. This is the way it should be, and, and he's that, right. And isn't he's right. That also, isn't that also dangerous to the prevailing Israeli mentality that that if they were to absorb all of the Palestinians living in Judea and Samaria in the West Bank, that that would uh, essentially convert Israel away from being a Jewish state? No, because what we are being threatened by when say we, I mean, the, the Jewish people here in Israel uh, in general is not the fact that there will be uh, an Arab minority, big or small. What we are threatened by is the notion of Palestinian nationality. Okay, which has, first of all, has got no historical grounds and has proven it itself to be very, very dangerous and racist on its, at its core. This is something that we have a moral and political right to object to. But once, once, once an individual decides, I want to be an Arab citizen in a country that respects my right to worship as a Muslim, uh, to vote as an Arab, to do whatever I want and to uh, fulfill myself as, uh, but not being a Palestinian, then I think that we have the moral obligation to give him that. And as long as he ditches uh, the, the the, the, the false notion of, of Palestinian nationality. I, now, I, I agree with we have the responsibility, but I disagree with that. It should be our goal. The reality is, at some point, uh, we will not be the minor. We will be a minority in our own state. No, that's and, not true. And I'm, no, I'm sorry. All the faking that demographics are saying that, that it's not. But if you take the West, if you take the West Bank and Gaza, and you look at the numbers, then. Okay, if we're not a minority, we'll be at 54 50 to 60 to... No, if you, if, we, if, we, if, we, if, you, if you bring trends into consideration, that we see, you'll see that it's, it's, no, it's, it's never not, going it to be not 54, true. It is, it's not true. We, we will be very close to the minority, if not the minority. That's not no. why we created a Jewish state. We created a Jewish state to be the majority in our own country. I think the peoplehood, well. to be a people in our own country, is more important than holding on to a piece of land. And that's why I'd like them to have their own land somewhere else. I, you know, the if reality. this is would have been bringing peace to the area, if I could could trust that giving them their own sovereignty in a certain piece of land will give us peace, then I would support it as well, even though I do have historical claims to that. But the fact is that I do not believe this is the case. This is one, not what they want. They do not want a land, they want our land. And even if we suffice in the smallest portion of what is the historical land of Israel, then, we, then this, is, we, this will be what they want. This is what they have been proving to wanting throughout the entire conflict. This, uh, that's the way it is. So this is not a question of whether or not we're giving them land. I would have given them land for peace if I would have had any reason to believe that this would indeed bring peace. All right, well, unfortunately, that is all the time that we have in the elections arena today. I'd like to thank our guests, Ziv Mao and Mark Schulman for coming in. And of course, thanks to all of you for tuning in. Also remember that for more news from ILE TV, please follow us on Facebook, like us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube. I'm Aaron Porras. See you next time.